seems legit. Hi Legitimates, welcome back. Today we are doing the Magdalena Circle Bag. I know I'm a bit late to the party, don't worry about it. Uh, we have done piping, we have done dragons, uh, we have done fun zipper tape. This was really fun. Uh, my arms hurt a little bit from it, it's fine. Uh, but all in all, bag is adorable. I do have a crossbody strap. I just didn't grab it for the video. It's just over there. Uh, but it's this black and red fleck vinyl. I just wanted to have like the feature of the dragons. And then on the inside, I've also done this pocket on both sides. On the inside, we have a small zipper pocket and a slip pocket on the other side. Uh, it has got binding. I made the binding out of the same fabric so it kind of blends in today instead of doing like a standout one. Also, if you're going to make, if you've never done binding, make something that stands in, uh, like blends in and doesn't stand out because then it doesn't show any mistakes from your first time. Anyway, if you want to see how to make it, let's go. Alright, let's do this. So I have already put my interfacing on. Uh, and I'm using my textured red fleck for the main body just because I can really but I am actually going to start with the pocket so I've just used a little bit of dragon I love this dragon stuff it's so cool um, and I just happen to have some red dragon fabric so that's why everything's a bit red actually let's start with the crossbody strap. Well, I've got a good size bobbin in there. So as always, I am going to use my three quarter inch double-sided tape. I am also, there's like a, a seam here where it goes from not textured to textured. So I am just gonna chop off the non-textured part because that is your selvage edge. Check the other end, do the same. We don't need that on there, so bye bye. All right, three quarter inch tape, flip it to the back, and then we're just going to pop this down the center. Now, I've just done, I just keep making things up as I go along, if we're totally honest. Um, I don't think this is the strap in the pattern, this is just what I felt like doing at the time. You can take any strap idea from any pattern and then just apply it to the bag you're making. This seems to be my favorite strap at the moment. Oh, come on. All right. So I'm just going to wipe that because the sticky tape wasn't sticking and I couldn't get my backing off. Then I use my fingernail to kind of poke the center, bring these together, and then push down. So this is... one and a half inches wide. So we're gonna need one and a half inch hardware for this. But again, you can change it to whatever you like. As a smaller bag, you might wanna do something smaller. You could also fold this over again and do a three quarter inch strap. So many different ways this could go. So I think originally you do that and then if I wanted to I could sew that over the top as well but that feels a bit too thick for a strap. Unless I cut this for something else. I cut this probably two weeks ago. And what I do at the time doesn't necessarily make sense to when I sit down and do it. Alright, so that's all stuck together. Let's just check the box. I have picked out the hardware. So the hardware will tell me what's going on. Okay, so no, those must be for the handles then. That's all right. So now that we've folded that, we're just gonna fold it in half again and make a three quarter inch strap. 
By doing it this way, there is no raw edges anywhere. If you're making it with leather, you can obviously just have raw edges. Stitch, back stitch. You always do the open edge first. So I'm folding it in half with my hands and just stitching it in second sections. You can, of course, instead, if you want to, clip it all together and go along and do it that way. for a change I'm gonna try and fix my lighting situation this afternoon If you're worried it's going to be twisty, which to be honest I am a little bit, we're going to chop and we're going to go all the way back to the other end and then start at the top and work our way down the other side. And what this will do, well, it will prevent any twisting that might happen while sewing. Now, don't, don't do this when you sew. It's bad for your shoulders. So this should help prevent any twisting that might occur. I haven't played with this vinyl enough to be confident in it not twisting. So we're just going to skip that problem. Right. And so now you can see no twisties. Drop off those tails and then we may as well make the whole strap and that will eliminate some of the pieces in the box. So you need two swivel clips and you'll need a strap adjuster if you are making it adjustable. If you are not making it adjustable, I do suggest that you perhaps make it a bit smaller than this. But ultimately I am not the boss of you and you can do whatever you want. Adjustable means it fits like a one size fits all. If you make it so it's a fixed size, that just won't suit everybody. And that's okay if you don't want to suit everybody. Sometimes you can't please everybody anyway. And then I'm just going to do a second line. So instead of doing, I'm just doing two, right. We're just going to do two little lines here. And I go backwards and that should be enough to kind of hold it all in place and then I need to trim off that crazy amount of tails and I'll show you the mess that I just created to prove that it happens to everyone so then I'm just going to take these and flick out all the tails that occurred trim them down as best I can so that's pretty good now it's trimmed down mostly Thread zapper. I like this one because it's USB rechargeable. Not that I've had to recharge it yet. Because uh, you don't have it on for very long. So then what I do is I just kind of melt those ends so that they go away. Because I don't want them there. Flip it to the top. See if there's any on top that need doing too. There usually is. Better. Now... No little pointy, sticky, uppy bits anywhere. So, we're going to go through this end. Up one side. Move that over. There we go. Down the other side. Pop this on. And then, just to be a bit extra, I'm thinking a strap end. 
And where have we got? I have some three quarter inch strap ends. And we need two of the screws in the box. So I used to sell these as a two pack. Um, you'll also want your electric mini screwdriver. You don't have to have an electric screwdriver. I just think they make life way easier. But each to their own. Now, if I push that on, I don't know if you can see that, but there's like little spiky bits sticking out the end. We're not doing that. Sometimes you can cover them. Sometimes you need to thread zap them off so that they don't become a nuisance. Like this one. Oh, that is stinky. Doesn't matter if you melt it to the vinyl, we're not going to see it. We just don't want them sticking out. Is all that actually matters. So this is going to be on the inside of the strap, uh, but you can put it inside or outside, just make your decision. Because it matters which side the screws go in. So the screws, whichever side the screws are on, are the side it's going to touch. Because this is the back. I have magnetized this. Uh, to do that, all you do is take your snippety snip magnet and run this, oh, whoops, hold on to it, just run it kind of, I don't know if you can see me doing that, but you run it back and forth and it magnetizes the end, which helps you pick stuff up easier. Okay, so that is now what the end's going to look like. And because we've gone to all that effort, I feel like a rivet there will be pretty. We didn't need a rivet here. You won't see that bit. Nobody looks at the join, but this side will be the part sticking out. So let's do a rivet, grab some rivets, because apparently this week I just feel like being very extra. I also think I'm secretly quite excited I get to sew again. We had school holidays, so I kind of had to have a fourth break. All right, in we go. One and two. I always like to click the cap on before I squish them. And I'm also going to, hopefully next week, figure out where I'm going to permanently attach these. I just can't quite pick where. But that's my strap now all done. So you can put that aside. You don't need that until you're ready to take photos of the bag. So I'm going to go put it in the photo making booth. Grab your exterior. Now because this is vinyl, I have not put any interfacing on here. But all of my lining has a medium woven because it was like a poly cotton. It was super lightweight. I wasn't enjoying that at all, to be honest. So because it's a curve, I am actually going to use clips. Because sometimes the stuff just wants to misbehave and I don't really feel like unpicking today. Now, ultimately, you can do any seam allowance on here that you want. Uh, you just need to remember that the bigger the seam allowance, the smaller the pocket. You're also going to either want to get your zigzag scissors, which mine are blunt, I still haven't fixed that, or take some snips and just snip all the way along. And you want to get close to the stitches, but not so close that you might accidentally cut it. I kind of like to do them on a bit of an angle too. You can just cut them straight down if you prefer. They're about half an inch apart. But what all this snipping is going to do is, you can see I've done lots, but it will make this more flexible. So when I turn it this way to top stitch it, you should still get a nice curve and you won't get any like sharp pointy bits where it's trying its hardest to bend against its will. I'm just going to use clips to hold it in place but you can see that it is quite a soft curve because snipping it has now allowed it to kind of flex. 
So you don't have to have zigzag scissors, they're just a quicker. Unless they're blunt and then they take way longer. I'm going to go up to a four stitch length, which is my decorative one. And we're going to top stitch. Now, if you want to, you can also top stitch around the whole edge, like so. And what this will do is create a single piece. So when I go to join it on later, I'm not going to struggle with trying to get it on there. So that is the outside, and then we've got our beautiful lining. Do, do, do. I've got another one. Apparently I'm doing two slip pockets. You can just do one on the front or the back, or you can do two. Now I will show you what this looks like without, just hope it works, without clips. So whatever your seam allowance you did on the first one, I do suggest you do it to the second one. It is always quicker to not clip, but sometimes it slips. We're going to use my very dodgy zigzag scissors and see what happens. It cuts vinyl fine. The vinyl side is not the bit I'm worried about. It's the interfacing and the, the fabric. They're still sharp enough to cut vinyl, no problem. But see, they're giving me grief over the other side. Sometimes if I pull it tight, it helps. Sometimes it doesn't. They are quicker, especially when they're sharp. However, for this bit, because it is a curve and I want it to sit nicely, I will still use clips for this. So it just saves a little bit of time. Some things still require a good clipping. And again, the zigzags have given it the freedom to move. So back up to a four stitch length. I'm going to start here. We're going to stitch slowly. I'm going to keep my arm tucked in. I'm sure it looks fine, but I feel ridiculous like this. But I also have a sore shoulder, and I'm pretty sure it's from not doing this. So Now, you can do this seam allowance at anything you like, so long as it's within your actual seam allowance. So you can do anywhere from quarter eighth to like three eighths. Um, so long as you don't see it. Same as the whole piping rule. As long as you're not going to see it, you can do whatever you want. Okay, let's grab some more. So these are for the bottom. I need my handles. Do I remember which one's which? So one of these is handles, which I assume is this one. And these would be the zipper top. And this is the zipper bottom. That makes the most sense to me. So the handles, I am going to put the accent on, not the crossbody strap. I mix that up and that's okay. I worked it out in the end. So again, three quarter inch double sided tape. It is rippable. I keep forgetting to do it, but it co totally can be done. This is the same stuff that the Ghana Sewing Room has, and it is awesome. I'm just going to get out of the habit of cutting it. I've cut for six years. It's a hard habit to break, I'm not going to lie. All right, so then we're just going to... Squish this into the center like I did the other one. It's textured, so it feels kind of fun to do. I can't remember what the pattern's called, but it's like, looks like stacked cubes. I don't know what it's called. It's going to probably bug my brain now. All right. I just got to, sorry, what I just did there, see how I miss, see how bubbles out there a little bit? Because I missed. And that will annoy me. So it's not staying. We're just going to unpick it and fix it. 
There is no need to have bad bits. It is sticky tape. It does just come up. Okay, I just want to also make sure I've got enough. So I just cut one stick of this that was the width of the vinyl. So I'm going to stick this down on top and I am going to top stitch all the way along. Now if you want to, you can stick this down or you can just hold it in place like I am. Choice is yours. doing all the strap work first. I do have another bobbin ready. I did think that far ahead today. Always back stitch to lock in those stitches. And back stitch. Chop off this excess as it is because that's now the other strap. That looks really fun. It's just got like bits of dragonness. I picked red because of the whole fire thing, uh, but you could pick anything really. Let's do the second one. So again, I always just put my finger on it. I have noticed that I do this and that's just part of the reason why I get fake nails because mine would never be long enough to actually do this. I just find it easier. It holds it in place without actually sticking completely to my finger. And then we're going to work along. And you don't have to go here. If that's not bugging you, you can come all the way over here and just do random bits. There's no rule of thumb of how you need to stick it down. You could do one end, do the other end, and meet in the middle. You don't have to go left to right or right to left. You can literally just jump around. Like, I can jump here in the middle of this now. Uh, and because this is a wider tape, it has a better stick. It's got more stickable area. So I think it sticks better. From personal experience, the thicker the tape, the better it sticks. So the three quarters is perfect for this. Is probably why I've nearly used the whole roll already. I still use the other sizes too. Every size has its place. So again, okay, again, tuck the arms in. see these ends because they get hidden under like another panel piece so I'm not worried about the ends we back stitch them but even if they did come undone there's other stitching on top of it that'll hold it in place later that bit can go in the bin it's not long enough to pretty much do anything with and that's okay so here's our beautiful handles now we need our main panel pieces, which are the full circles with the foam on them. I'm going to put my slip pockets in there. Ugh. So the idea is that these are going to go on like so, but I've got to measure the bottom and it turns out I didn't bring my laptop in here. So I'm going to hit pause, go and get the instructions and work out how far up that I need to do this. Um, or I, I mean, I could eyeball it, but I don't want to do that today. We're going to actually kind of follow the pattern. I went into the pattern and I have marked all of the things that I needed to mark. I've also picked like center top, center bottom and the sides. Uh, so I have marked both of them. My first line was crooked. I don't know if you can see the leftover chalk, but we fixed it. So it's fine. 
Uh, so we're going to take our handles, ignore my weird birds outside. And they say to kind of chop it on an angle a little bit. So I'm just going to chop it like that. And then, so that one will go there, that one will go there. So I've got to chop it that way. So I'm just chopping a little bit off because that's what the pattern had. And then I can just lay this down on top and copy it so that they're the same. Like that. Excellent. Grabbing some double-sided tape. I finally finished one of my rolls. We are going to measure up to about here. I'm just going to put it in the center. So all these measurements are in the pattern, as always. I just don't give them out because it's not my place to do so. When it's my pattern, I'll tell you because, you know, I'm allowed to. I'll give myself permission. All right, so I'm just putting it on all the ends. I've got some very interesting birds here. There was one in my house the other day and it sounded like a cat. I thought there was a cat in my backyard, like meowing in quite a guttural way. And then I went outside and there's this bird perched on my fence, staring at me, making cat noises. It was so weird. Anyway. Right. So I've now got it on all the ends. This is going to go here like that. Then this one comes around and goes here like that. That looks fairly straight. I am just going to double check with my fancy, fancy ruler. Yep, no, I'm happy. Right, so that's one. I'm going to stick the other ones on too because it just makes the most sense. And then we can the rule is just there to help it be straight. I'm all about the straight. Now the bottom of this you won't see because we're still going to put a piece over it. Um, so don't be too worried about that. I just care about straight. Oh, actually, now that I think about it, I should probably mark with something erasable. So this is erasable. How far up to, I'm going to stitch to because that feels somewhat important. So I'm going to stitch to here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back through the stitches that I already did. Because, again, that makes the most sense to me. So, I'm going to start here, and we're just going to go, where's my mark? Oh no, where's the mark? Is that the mark? Oh, there it is. There it is there. Right. So, I'm just going to go back through the original stitches, if I can. Needle down. We're going to go across, which is like two stitches, by the way. And then pivot back down, stop it, cut off those tails. Back stitch and trim. I'm ignoring all my chalk marks for now. It'll come off when it's ready or when I'm ready to take it off. Get rid of that tail because it's in my way. Again, the mark's up here. Is that the mark? So hard to tell. You can't hardly tell because of the print. And 
into the mark across my true stitches swivel black not black back swivel black and back stitch and so now the handles on we are good to go you can also add a rivet if you want to have some extra bling this bag is already going to have a lot of bling we're about to do um glitter piping but you know whatever Now I'm not doing the backpack version of this, as you saw at the start. Instead I decided to do true slip pockets, because slip pockets are always handy. Especially on a smaller bag, I like to have pockets. Alright, other side. Nearly done. So, to the best of your ability, stitch through those same holes. I mean, or you can, you don't have to. You could just do like a second set of strips, straps, stitches, whatever. Bring my arms in. See, it's a bad habit. Back stitch, trim. Take off the tails and throw them in the bin. Right, so the handles are now on. We are going to take this piece and it sticks on here and then hides the handles. But first, on this edge, we're gonna find the center so I can line the center up because I am all about things being like even. It doesn't look even, it looks crooked. I don't know about you, but that looks crooked to me. I mean, the best way to fix that problem, put that there, up against the edge. You know what? Double-sided tape is going to help this problem. I'm going to use the thick stuff, but I'm just going to put a single line. I don't have to cut it. It tears. Because it's terrible. No, it's actually amazing. It's not terrible. It is tearable or rippable. All right, better. Let's try that again. So this big chunky thing will just help hold it in place. Like that. Does that look even? Does that look crooked? I mean, it looks crooked. I'm not sure why I'm struggling so much with this. Move that up and that up a little bit. These are straight because I made sure they were straight. Okay, that's straight there. Was that a whole lot of effort? Absolutely, but it'll be worth it when it's straight. So I'm just gonna stitch that down. This also now makes look like the handles look a little bit invisible, which is kind of cool. And then around the edge, we're just gonna top stitch that down so that it's one piece. Because we've still got more pieces to add on this. Such as of this piece. We don't see that, but it hides the straps and it makes it look pretty. So we do it. Then again, we're going to find the center. Line the center up. Easy enough. You can add some clips if you like. We will be repeating this whole process on the other side because I'm doing two pockets. Mainly because I wanted a whole bunch of dragon. To show up that was my whole thing I love the dragon and around we go this 
Is there a lot of stitching on this bag? Absolutely. We've still got more to go, guys. But so far, that is adorable. All right, let's repeat that whole crazy process with the other side. Hopefully this side will be quicker because now I know what I'm doing. Always helps. That is straight. Move that up. See, it's way quicker. Use a ruler. Circles can like mislead you into thinking that it's not straight when it is. So don't let it. Oh no, I just ran out of bobbin. Did you hear that? Because I heard that. It's alright. Here's one oh, I prepared earlier. Then I touched it and the whole thing had come unraveled. Okay. Um, I'm going to go in there, stitch, back stitch. Hope it doesn't mess up my bobbin. Sounds alright. And then again, we're going to go around this edge. Trim off the tails, and this one, and this one, and there is the next piece. Then I'm going to again fold this in half, find the center, snip. I'm like, where's the center here? Center with the center. Work my way out and around like that, and then the other way. Clips and curves, always a necessity in my opinion. I don't feel like fighting this at all. Ta da! Alright, I'm just gonna base that on so it's like half to a quarter inch. Oh, not half, sorry, an eighth or a quarter inch. It doesn't really matter as long as it's on the main point of that. Ta-da! Alright. So that's now both my outsides looking fabulous. Now let's grab the next lot of bits. So I know I had two of these. I saw it in there just before. This is my zipper top. Actually, before we get to that, why don't we do our piping? Let's do the piping. So, you can start from wherever. I'm going to start from right here. I'm going to leave a little bit. And then I'm going to come on and I'm going to stitch right next to the stitches I already put in. Now, you're probably going to want to snip all the way along here. Because the whole thing's a curve. Which is fine, you can do that. won't hurt anybody you just want to snip, snip up to but not through the stitches that are there we're putting this around the edge and just adding it in this is going to be a very thick seam I am aware but that's right it's going to look amazing so who cares who doesn't want gold piping on their track and back Work our way around the edge. Again, I'm not doing anything spectacular. I'm just holding it at the edge and working my way around. So now that I'm here, I'm getting close back to the start. 
So what I want to do is I want to make sure a little bit's going to overlap. Just a little bit. Then I'm going to unpick a little bit of this because we need to cut out some of the excess piping so that it becomes one straight thing. Now I know there's a bunch of different ways to do piping. This is the way I like because it feels smoothest. Right, so the idea is, is that this is going to go over that. So you need to cut out the little bit of excess piping so it won't be twice as thick. And just chop out that little bit, throw it in the bin. Then wrap this around. And then stitch around. And then boom, continuous piping without having to kind of fold it down and in. You gotta trust me that this is gonna look amazing, all right? So, that's one. Let's do the same to the other one. So again, you can start from wherever. You just gotta make sure you leave a little bit. So I like to leave whatever that is. So what, about two inches? under the needle and then clip all the way along. You don't have to do piping, but on a bag like this, it's gonna help it sit nicer, especially with how much curve there is. Oh, I just think it's gonna be awesome. You're welcome to ignore me. I won't even be offended. All right. down you can even tuck the handle into the pocket if that's going to make your life easier all right so here's the first join which is the end of piece one of three if you watched my other video on how to do piping i've just made like a whole bunch in the gold for future problems And then, so we're going to just overlap a little bit again. And then I've still got heaps here, which I'm going to wind up like I do zipper tape. And then I can just store that for a rainy day. You could also put it on like a ribbon spool if you've got like a spool holder in your sewing room. So here's the joiny bit. So you can cut the thread. It is advised to use a larger thread when making your piping purely because you've got to do a little bit of unpicking and it makes it quicker. But you don't have to. Because as always, I am not the boss of you. Cut it out. Lay it down. Overlap it. The piping should line up nicely. And then around we go. And back step. And because it's glitter piping, you can barely see the joint. Look at that. Even if I move it slowly and you know that it's right, the joint is right here, right? You can barely tell. Especially once it lays down flat like that. Like, you won't even know. So anyway, love it. I'm going to stop and have a food break. Right. I feel much better after eating. So let's do these little tabs because I really don't want to forget them. And we all know that I might. You want to put this roughly in the middle. Again, probably didn't need to snip it. It's a habit. It's going to take me a while to break it, guys. Move my bin closer. I must have moved it before. So I'm just going to fold both sides into the center. Grab my 20 mil D ring. Fold it over. Clip it down. Um, do I want to 
to stitch it actually. I might stitch it on each side. So I'm still on my four stitch length. So I'm going to go down one side, down the other. I mean, this won't really stick out, so it's not a huge deal, but I'm still just going to do it. Chop off the first one. I love a good chain stitch. I'm not worried about the ends because they will be hidden. And I'm mainly doing this so I don't lose small pieces. Because I always lose small pieces. It's this magical ability I have. Okay. This is the fabulous zipper tape I'm using. Does it totally match? Meh, not really. Matches the outside print more than it matches the inside print. But... It does have like some pinks and oranges, so it matches enough to make me happy. Not everything has to be perfectly matchy-matchy, and I just really love this zipper tape, to be honest. And I plan on using two zipper pulls, one on each end. Um, so I don't really have to think about the direction of every anything. Let's grab my zipper cutting scissors now that it's lined up. Chop it off. I will still need a little bit more for the inside zipper. If you want to, you could change it so it actually matches the inside, but I think it's going to be kind of cool to stand out. This fabric, I'm sure you can get it online elsewhere, was part of like a quilt set. So it had like a big panel and then all these other coordinating things. This was just one of the parts, which I thought looked amazing. I don't know where to get it online. It was in my local quilt shop back when I lived in Victoria. We're going to back stitch. Then we're going to pull this back. See, it's going to bring some colour to the top of the bag. I'm cool with it. We're also going to pull back this back bit. Now, an easy way to do this is actually to come off and I'm going to stitch this edge first so that everything lines up and joins together. Now don't do this if you're doing binding, but I'm doing binding, so because binding with all the piping and everything else, I just think that's probably going to be easiest for me. But if you're not doing binding, then you don't have to do it this way at all. Now that we're going to see this, I'm going to put it up to a four stitch length while I think of it. Just done. There's one side. I just think that looks amazing with a different colour. Sometimes too matchy matchy is also not cool. And these colours here, these tones, work in really well. So, meh. And <clears throat> that tone works in really well with the whole dragon thing. It's going to match. You just got to trust the process sometimes. And trust my crazy ideas. Because let's be honest, they are kind of crazy. I'm just okay with it. So I like to clip both ends and then work my way into the center. Mainly because the zip is not sitting straight and I refuse to let it beat me. So, grab the other bit. If these are directional for your bag, please make sure you do them directionally. Mine are not, so I'm not worried. I'm actually sitting here wondering if I've got enough of this to do like a wallet. This would be very cool as a wallet. Back to a two and a half stitch length. Yes, I jump back and forth a lot. If you can preset your machine in any description, I'd have this as setting number one and the four as setting number two. It'd be amazing. You just switch back between the two. As your two favorites. I am going to disassemble, go up to a four, and then again I'm going to join this open edge first 
to ensure because they are the same size right even though they might pretend like they're not they are and I refuse to let it tell me otherwise so now I'm, I can pull on this and see how it like flattened out and become bigger It's just trying to be tricky. Edge bit. You don't have to do that edge bit. I just do because I've done all the other edge bits, I suppose. See, looks cool as. I'm going to crack this end. I'm using my chunky zips. I love these zippers. They make me the happiest. Don't really know why. If I want to later on, I could definitely add a tassel cap to this. Put tassel caps on these. I've only got really chunky ones, but they are very cool. All right, join them in the middle. Make sure there's no lump. There's not, but I just like to check. Okay, then we're gonna grab these and these go on the zipper. Literally just on top like that. So I'm gonna put them on both ends like that and then I'm gonna tack them in place. Mainly just because I don't want them moving and they will try, they always do. All right, I'm not even gonna backstitch. It's a temporary hold until I do the next step. Later on if I want to, depending on what the seam allowance looks like once I've done, you can add a rivet to here, but we can do that later. I don't have to decide on that now. And if we do it later, it also means that I'm not sewing too close to hardware too, so that helps. So now that my D-rings are on, I'm going to take this and line her up. Oh, I've got an itchy mess. And then uh, this end with some clips. Now, you can see here, mine's a little bit bigger. I'm going to deal with that in a minute. Not yet. So, now the lining is joined. We're going to take our exterior. Now, I haven't put any interfacing on this. My brain is wondering should I have some stabilizer, but. It might be alright because it's, uh, no, it should be alright. And if it's not, I can always attach it later. Don't be fooled about how many things you can technically put on later. It will be definitely be more fiddly if I decide I want it there, but it can be done. So, see. So now they are all joined. So you should have two loops. You should have the lining loop and the exterior loop. And by sewing it here, we're going to hide that seam for when we do binding later. Joining stitch length, because we're doing a joining thing. Stitch and back stitch. Go over that middle bit. Stitch and back stitch. Drive off the end. This will very well be my cutting, it's not the pattern. Just assume it's always me, it usually is. But it's not a big deal because we can just trim it down. Oh, it looks so cool with that zip. I definitely do not regret my decision there. I'm going to grab these scissors. Now, you don't actually have to cut the whole way. We just want it to match up here. So you can actually just kind of taper it into that bit. It'll be fine. So 
Ta-da! Done. Now it all matches. That's pretty easy. So, I'm going to flick it around like this. And I'm actually just going to join one edge because I still need to decide if I want to put some foam or something in there. So if I just join the one edge so everything sits evenly. going to stitch across this bit here because it'll look pretty and it gives it like an extra layer of stability and I'll come and stitch the other one over here too I'm just gonna leave that one side open in case I change my mind and want to put foam or some stabilizer in there I don't have to make that decision yet I can literally attach the one side and then see how it feels. So now we've got our gussety piece. We can pop that in the bucket with our other pieces. I'm going to put all the scissors away. I don't need any scissors here. Then let's move on to our lining. Now I took a Tory pocket and cut it in half and then one's going to be a zipper pocket and one's going to be a slip pocket. And that's just because I did not have the instructions with me when I was cutting. So that's how that went. So I'm just going to stitch to here and I'm using a quarter inch seam allowance. Now this is going to need an iron for sure to make it look nice. And I'm also going to chop that bit there and this bit here and then that stops that pulling that was just my little jump stitch scissors and then trim off all these little corners because it'll sit nicer if we do then through the hole that we left we're just going to turn it out now these both have a medium woven interfacing. I'm going to get my turning stick because it is just really handy for this. You just shove it along the seams and into the corner. Now I want to iron that so it looks extra good. So I'm going to set it aside. And then we're going to take this one and we're going to fold it in half and we can just draw our zipper box on to do that I always do it half an inch from the fold and then half an inch down that looks crooked what's going on it is crooked half an inch down and then we just do the sidey bits and that is your rectangle so you can do that you can make it any size you just want to make sure you've got enough seam allowance on the side that's all so I'm gonna fold this in half and then in half again One. so these top these are top bottom and size this will just help later uh, it'll also help us get this square because circles can be tricky. So I'm folding them in quarters and then where it intersects, trim off just a little tiny bit of the fabric. And that gives us like a north, south, east and west to kind of work from. So if we fold this in half and find the center here, I can line this up like this and then take a ruler and then make sure that it's centered like that. Ta 
Although I think I want it up further. So there's the center, there's the center. And then I'm just going to line that up. I don't want it too high because I don't want it in the seam allowance. But I also don't want it too low. And if you watch one of my Timo videos, you saw that I got these. These have become my new favorite thing in the universe. Uh, we can actually use four on this bag. So these are technically like hemming clips. But they work wonders for pinning this. Because you can reach all the way along. Ah. Or you can drop them too. That works well. Alright, so it will hold all of the sides onto your bag like this. Pull that out flat. I'm still getting used to using them, so don't judge. But, super cool. All right, so that is now holding the pocket. You can throw it around seven ways from Sunday if it makes you happy. All right, so we're on a two and a half stitch length. We are going to stitch. We are going to bring our wing in so that we don't damage our shoulders. It'll be why my neck's so sore. Back stitch, pivot. Jump to the other line, stitch, back stitch, and then we have to follow the right bit because, you know, things happen. Back stitch. Chop this little jump stitch here. I promise it helps. You can peel off all of your hemming clips. These are just awesome because they reach further. We're going to turn it over, we're going to trim those off and we're going to chop that jump stitch as well. And then I want to make sure, because it looks crooked. Again, could be my brain, it looks crooked. Uh, it's not too bad. Always a fun one. Fold it over, trim, and then I'm going to triangle out these ends. And the other side. And then we need to iron. So I figure I could go and iron both the pockets at the same time. So we're going to push this through and iron it flat. And glorious and then I will also iron this flat and tuck in those raw edges everything is ironed I've put my zipper on some zipper tape so we're just gonna lay that down you want the zipper pull to be on the zipper teeth so you can lay it over the top like so I might even put it backwards because it's easier to stitch and then we're just going to sew all the way around. Again, I'm going to pull my wing in. Slide their wings, not arms, by the way. Then I'm going to zip it up so that I don't distort any of my beautiful stitching. And continue sewing. The zip up looks lovely. How nice does that blend in anyway so now we're gonna fold this down and I'm gonna stitch all the way around the outer edge start on the side we're gonna go down we're gonna go across start with the needle down and then pivot and then we're gonna go up the side so I just keep folding the stuff out of my way as I go and we are of course going to trim off the tails. So there's our zipper pocket looking fabulous. Here is my 
slip pocket and I definitely like this side better because it's got like a dragon. So right, we're going to make this the top. I'm going to just stitch along the top to make it pretty. Of course you don't have to do that. I just am. And then I'm going to just pop that. Oh wait. Kind of in the middle like so. So here's like a top notch here and a bottom notch. Circles are hard, especially if you haven't used a directional print, which I very clearly have not. Oh, but look at that. I got it perfect. So with that sitting there, I am just going to stitch around the three remaining edges that don't have any stitching. Needle down, hook across. it up, stitch and back stitch, and then there's a little slip pocket. Don't know what you're going to put in it. Does it matter? No. Different people carry different things. Cute little slip pocket. So that's the insides done. You could have done a cargo pocket if you want. You could have made the pocket go all the way along and been in the seam allowance. You've got options. You could have done like a half moon and had the whole bottom as a slip pocket. My brain does so many things all at the same time. So now what I want to do is I'm going to take this with the zipper at the top like this and I'm going to go and iron those two layers together. All right, and then we're going to do the same to this. So we're going to get the top, which is here. And this one, which is here, and we're going to put them together and we're going to iron that together as well. And I am thinking I might put some foam in the side. So I'm quite happy I left that open. I think just a little bit more firmness in the gusset will be amazing. So let's go do all that ironing. Come back. Right, so I've got our, I've now got some stuff in here. So I'm just going to close the other side now. Just because it always makes it easier when it's a single piece. one piece and will be easy to sew. Let's do the same to these. So we just have to we're gonna tuck this handle back in so it's not in the way. There's a very key moment there. So then again we're just going to go around the edge, make sure that this is going to reach within the seam allowance. There's a lot of layers here, um, a lot of vinyl layers specifically, actually, which you may or may not be concerned with on your machine. I'm not concerned. This machine's a beast. It's not designed to do what I make it do, but it does it pretty well, if I'm honest. But I want to stitch around because I just want to make sure that everything is one piece. It's going to be so much easier to join it when it's one piece. And I don't want to stitch the handles down, which is why I'm tucking them inside. You can also crank it up to a four stitch length if you want it to sew quicker. This is just a basting thing like everything else. Round, 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 round. Oh, I just ran out of bobbin thread. <sighs> So for anyone that's new to the whole world of binding, and if you're wondering why we sew it together, the easiest answer is because when you're trying to sew multiple layers together, if, they, if there's more than two, one will always try and wiggle out of the middle. If you've got, so if I wasn't basting this, for example, we would have the piping, the two layers from the slip pocket plus the two layers of so this piece here and that little piece we put over so that would be what this is technically two because it's folded over so it'd be two four six layers in there 
plus the back piece, which would make seven. So that's seven layers. And then you want to try and attach another two. So you try to attach nine layers together. Always do your bobbins at full speed, especially with an industrial. It pumps the oil through. And only make them about three quarters full, otherwise they misbehave. So the reason I constantly base everything together is because nine layers would be hell to try and hold in place. And the whole thing is a constant curve because we're doing a circle. So by joining it at every stage, you're not allowing it to slip and move. And it just gives you a simple two layers to join. And two layers is much more manageable. The clip grabs the top, the clip grabs the bottom, and you're done. Right. Back to this. Where was I? Here. Oh, you're still going to misbehave. I can hear that. What happened was the bobbin has created a loop. I can show you what that looks like. See this? This is not meant to be there does it to me every time. I didn't even backstitch that time. Whatever. So again, we're just basing this into the seam allowance. Done. So now we just have two layers and a crap ton of tails. Please go and trim all these tails. You don't want them poking out of your piping. It'll be annoying to have to go back and trim them out of the piping. So this is now what we've got, like a weird tortilla pancake thing. We are going to find the center. The way to find the center is we join this seam, allow this seam here with the other side, bring it up, Clip the middle, that is the top. Gonna to do the same to the other side, top. And then we're gonna do the same to the bottom. Pull it down, this is the bottom center. Because circles are tricky. Don't start your first ever bag on a circle. Then I'm gonna join the top and the bottom there, pull it out to the side, and that is center side relatively self-explanatory but this will just remember how we did it before on the circles it'll just make it easy i had to take that phone call it's my husband and he usually only rings me when he like needs something or there's something important i need to know and i didn't need to know that so i am glad i picked that up all right these are both the same so i don't have a front and a back and also i put the zippers on both ends so there's not really a front and a back so you can just pick wherever so we're going to find this top center which is here because i nicked it this is why we nick it and don't just draw it and i'm going to put three clips at top center why three because i said so then we're going to come to center side and again we're going to put three clips now if your clips aren't very strong oh, i recommend more than three clips and then I'm going to go, I'm going to pull this. I don't know if you just saw me do that. If you look like this, it looks like it doesn't fit. It does. Bear with me. We're going to grab it and we're going to bring it up and tuck. I'm using these two fingers to tuck it in to make it a 3D object. See how that now sits 3D, right? That is literally what we are after. It will do a bit of bubbling on this piece because we're trying to fit it in. But at the seam allowance, it will be fine. So that is how you fit the circle in. Lots of people freak out that it's not smooth. It is not meant to be. Circles get bigger as you get wider. It fits at the seam allowance and then the excess bubbles out towards the edge. So don't stress about that. It's literally what it's meant to do. Right, next side goes to, where is my other side? Now I can't see it. It's all right, we'll go the other way. There we go. Center side there. 
So again, clip, and again, three clips, not just one. One, things can pivot. We don't want that. Trust me, we really don't want that. That's how things get crooked. So again, I'm going to grab this. I'm going to use these fingers here to tuck it under and hold it like a 3D object. Now, this is where the piping is going to be super awesome, and I'm going to show you. The piping is then going to hold the shape. How cool is that? This is why we do piping on binding bags. Is it tricky? Absolutely. freaking lutely Is it worth it? Yes. Hands down, yes. Because the piping will help hold the circle shape. So again, I'm just shoving that in with these fingers. I'm holding, I'm pinching it with these two and then shoving with these ones. I must say shoving because it is literally what I'm doing. I'm not being gentle about it. If you can't be rough with your bag, it will not survive a person. People are rough. Children are rough. Everybody's rough. Just assume that whoever you are either giving or selling your bag to is going to be rough and it needs to be able to handle it. That is my life advice on that. Right, so see here, it's still sticking out a bit, so we're just going to shove it some more. Hello, Knuckles. I need another clip. All right. Boom. Circle. Piping. Looks awesome. So now we need to change our foot over to have the piping foot. So you want the piping foot facing you on the left-hand side because the raw edge will be over here. That makes sense. So I'm going to use a bobbin. Don't come for me over that. I use a bobbin to take on and off my shoes. Um, my machinist, mechanic, sewing machine guy, told me I was allowed to. So there you go. You don't have to do that. You can have a screwdriver. But let's be honest, I have enough things in this room. All right. So the piping foot is now here. Now this is going to be tricky, right, because there's so many layers. There's like nine layers now, and I want to be able to try and feel that piping. So a couple of things you can do. Option one, stab it with this, right, except I find that my fingers can feel it better than a stabby thing, personally. It's also why I get nails, keeps my fingers out of the way. So feel for your piping, turn the light on if you can. And off we go, nice and slow. Also, you could just follow your seam allowance because it should be where it's meant to be. Feeling for the piping. You really want to sew up against this piping. However, because we put that line of stitching so far back, if we're not super duper tight, you're not going to see that um, stitch. So it won't totally matter. Even though I'm sure a few of you are freaking out right now. It's fine. we just got to feel for the piping. Get it to run the channel. And the thing is, you can always go and do another line. So you're better off to sew a loose piping than sew on the actual piping cord because then you have to unpick stuff. We all know how I feel about that. And we're going very slowly. Piping is the sewest thing on the planet that I sew. Oh, scared me then. Anytime something happens when I'm concentrating, I automatically think the needle's going to snap and flick up and get me. Every time. It's just one of my issues. The light turned off. It actually scared me. <sighs> Whatever. I'm also cleaning up the clips as I go. Even though this is lots of layers, I'm not really struggling to sew through it. It's more just about making sure I'm getting close to that piping. It's all about the piping cord today. I even backstitched. 
look at me go. Okay, so I'll show you how much cooler the piping makes a circle bag. Let's turn it out so I can show you. Now I, I will have to do another pass, I always do. As close as I think I'm getting, it's never quite close enough, right? But, how much? So by pushing it out this way, I can also see where I need to get closer. All right, so that's the outside. Looks amazing. But if you get close, see how there's like just a little bit of a gap. Here, nice and tight. Here, just a little bit loose. Now, you could leave it at that. If you got it to there and it's your first ever piping, great job. So see here how it's just a little bit wider? So I basically need to go through and stitch one stitch length closer to the whole thing. And that will just help kind of tighten that piping up and make it like that little bit more firm. So see it's a bit loose there. Once we tighten that up, it won't be as ripply. Not that it's super bad to begin with, but we are aiming for awesome. So I am literally going to go go down a slightly smaller stitch length and then I'm going to come in here and we're going to stitch just a little bit closer in to the centre. Just a little bit. We also don't have clips to contest with this time because it's all joined. So it's going to make it a little bit easier. And I didn't over sew anywhere onto the piping. So I don't really have to worry about that either. Okay, I'm doing that thing with my arm again. Tuck it in, people. Don't have shoulder issues like I do. I'm trying to book a massage. My mate does amazing, like, therapy stuff. She's always busy though, because she's so good. Alright, so let me just show you what doing that extra line of a difference has made. Because I promise it has made a difference. I'm not going to keep doing this all the time. But I just want to show you what I'm talking about. See already, see how that now sits as a better circle? It's just because we sewed it that little bit closer. And it's such a little thing. And now the piping sits in the groove. Look at that. schmick o Looks nice. Which is, you know, literally the point of doing piping. And because I wanted something glittery. So that second stitch has made me very happy, actually, because I think that's sitting much better and much nicer. Go back inside out. So from here, you can either you can do two things. You can trim this down and bind this side, and then attach the other side, or you can attach both sides and then do binding. I'm going to attach both sides because I'll change my foot to do the binding. So we're going to attach this now. So center top, center top's over here somewhere there. Join it. Now we always want the clips to face the outside because it's easier. And then we can go do center side, which is around here somewhere. Sometimes, now because of all the layers, like it's a little bit harder to see. Hold that thought. Center side. Center side. There we go. It just takes a second. So now I'm going to, I always have it facing this way. Push it out, grab it, push it as a 3D object. Make the clips face out. I promise there is method to this madness. And even though there's a lot of layers, I think the machine is hooning through it, personally. Um, I can't even see 
where this side piece is. So yeah, you can decide, like if you've got a print or if you're just going to do one pocket and do the backpack option, you just got to think about a few things through this bag. True Zips makes most of your decision a lot easier unless you've got a directional print. In which case it makes it a little bit trickier again. It's just an extra thought process. Oh, what am I doing? This way. One, two, and three. And then just grab a half. So I'm pinching it and using these fingers to shove it under. And then hold it as a 3D object. If you've got a binding, uh, if you've got a cylinder arm, you can also hang the bag off the edge. It makes it a bit easier too. I need to start doing more videos for you on the cylinder arm. I love that machine. Um, it's awesome. Oh. So let's try all of that again. I'm going to trim off that tail because that's just rude for being there in the first place. And I'm, I'm actually thinking I want to bind it with the dragon fabric to make the binding not obvious in the bag. Sometimes I do opposite colours because it makes me really happy to make it noticeable. But I actually think that this would look better if I made my own binding out of this fabric, which I have not yet done. So I'm going to have to have stop the video again. Whatever. It's fine. So, feel for the piping. I can feel it. I can kind of see it. This is why nails are so handy. You can like stab around in there. You can also get different size piping feet um, for thicker piping. You do get options. But you can run the, the thicker piping with the same foot, I have found. Tied. I mean, I'm three quarters of the way there, but still. They need a break when they need a break. Doesn't help that I have to constant, constantly remind myself to tuck them in. Alright. I'm just going to peek in there and see how I did. Because you can just see a little bit. So again, I will do one more stitch of line, like line of stitching, not stitch of lining. That is not a word. Oh, it actually feels pretty tight down there. I did good. It doesn't need another stitch of lining. Start line of stitching. Wow, can't speak today. Good job, me. No, actually, I think that's not bad. Not bad at all. <sighs> oh, I just need to give my arms a rest. They get very, very tired. The circle wasn't helping, and the fact that I can't just do this anymore. I mean, I can. I'll just damage myself. I got really close to that piping. I actually think it'll be fine. It's not as out of it as I thought it was. Okay. I'm going to make some binding. So to make the binding, I am going to cut two inch strips and then fold both edges into the middle and then fold it over again so I've got that crease because then the crease just kind of slots onto the end. 
So it's like a double fold binding. I won't be cutting it on the bias because it's not interface, so it's got enough give to get around this corner or curve, whichever way you want to look at it. I have done one side, but I'll show you how I'm going to do this. I am just going to cut this down. Even though this is the correct seam allowance, by the time I slot that on to nine layers, it's not quite going to reach. So I'm just going to trim some off. Just a little bit. We're not trimming anything dramatic. Like we're, we still want to have the seam allowance there. We just want slightly less of it, as you can see. Because there's just a little bit much. Uh, these are fabulously sharp scissors. As you can tell by how easy it's cutting through nine layers. Now I just cut two full strips. So I figure we can do one at a time. So the first thing I want to do is cut that end off. And then we're going to slot it over like this. So the seat, the the fold that we ironed into the center so just should sit right on the edge. And then that means that both sides have an even amount. And then we can just stitch it down. I also don't want the join to be at the top. That's silly. You want it somewhere around the bottom-ish. Doesn't have to be directly on the bottom. Just the bottom-ish. So yes, we are adding another four layers of fabric to this. But you want to be able to hide it. You don't want to see the raw edges. You could have also done this the other way where you stitch it on and then fold it around. Was also an option like they do with quilt binding. I like this way because you only have to stitch once except for the spots you miss. There's always at least one spot I miss. It's this magical ability I have where I miss bits. I didn't bother joining these because I don't need it. We're also probably going to need most of the clips in the bowl like we did before. And that's okay. You want to just space them fairly close so it doesn't have a chance to shift while we're stitching it. I've actually never tried to stitch this on with the piping foot. We'll give it a go. Who knows? All right, so when we get back to the start, we're going to do a little bit extra so that we can fold under the raw edge. Because this is cotton, it's not going to behave like normal binding stuff. So you want to fold under that raw edge so there are no raw edges and then it won't fray and carry on like a lunatic. See, I think, I think this was the right choice for this particular print, right? Different prints, I think, deserve different types of binding, like colours and stuff. This is just what I'm picking. So, off we go. I'm using my middle finger to push against it to make sure it doesn't shift like I always do. You can also, if you're worried, use a sew wall and hold it from the top. Very real option for you, if that's your jam instead. I get fake nails so I don't have to do that. But it can be done. If you don't have nails, I can't grow them to save myself. Like that's not a thing. That's why I get fakies. So this is actually working fine with the piping put on, so that's cool. Yeah, that shifted a little bit. So now I'm going to use this to kind of shove it all the way in there. Because we want it to cover the stitches, that's the whole point. Oh. 
I also notice this takes a lot longer than, you know, normal sewing. It is a constant curve. And don't be in a hurry. If you get it right the first time, we won't have to go back and fix bits. Which is always the goal, it's just not usually how it goes. But I am nearly back to the start now. Alright, let's see how I did. Oh, surprisingly well. I got it all. So from a distance, how cool is that? You can't even really tell that there's piping. Oh, my forearm here hurts, but it looks awesome. Oh. Now, where did I put the other piece? Because I thought I put it on my shoulders. Oh yeah, I moved it over here. So I've already clipped the other side. I did that off camera because you don't need to watch me do it twice. But this is, this is the last step here. So if we get this on first time like I did the other side, we are good to go. I didn't think that was going to happen. I thought for sure I missed some bits. I love it when it works out. Lots of clips close together and slow and steady. Seems to be the trick for this. And ironing that centre seam really does help place it right on the edge too. Which is how you make sure you've got an even amount on both sides. You can also use thick waterproof canvas as binding. I know Sandra from the Ghana Sewing Room does that. So if you're buying some in my pre-order, before you chop it all up, cut, cut a couple of strips. Uh, especially if you're ordering like two or three meters, you'll get it as a solid piece. So what you should do is cut like a strip or two, and then you'll have continuous binding without having to have a join, which is even cooler. You can join it, but it's always fun to just not need one. Drew this close to you. I don't know if you can see, but I'm like bringing it right to me so that I don't have to fight it. Trim off these tails that I've just come to so we don't have to worry about it later. Right on the edge. We're getting back to the start again. I'll put one more clip. Then we're just going to overlap it just a little bit. I don't need that for anything. I can't think of anything that's useful for. Alright, tuck under the raw edge like so. And then clip it down. I also never like to start here. I find if I start here, I always miss. Okay. Home stretch. I'm just stretching out my neck. You can't see it on camera. Oh, I really need a massage. Everything's just tight. It's probably from doing this all the time, but whatever. Start from wherever you feel like. Doesn't matter, I just don't like to start at the joint, but you can literally start anywhere else. Grab this, so it just shifted, and I don't want to get my finger that close to the needle. And then all we have to do is turn the bag out and we are done. So you can you can have a lot of fun with this. There's a lot of cool different stuff you can do. If you didn't want the handles like this, you could add them into the seam at the top. 
if that was your thing. Um, and then you could put like a cool animal face on the front. Or we could do embroidery all along the front. Or you could skip the handles and just have the crossbody. And then you've got a blank face to do with as you please anyway. So many cool options. So little time. You could do HTV stuff all down the front. That'd be cool. You want a small, if you're going to make a set, you want a smaller matching wallet because it is a smaller round bag. So you'll want like a mini NCW or like a little pocket pal or the bifold wallet from Sonar. That was the join just there. I'm going to give my arms a break just for a second. Again, this muscle here, super tight, feeling a bit sore. Apparently it's getting a workout for this. But home stretch. And then we're going to check the other side there in case I miss some spots. It does happen. Don't be disheartened if it does happen to you because I'll be genuinely surprised if I didn't miss somewhere on this side. I always miss somewhere, guys. Always. It's a fluke when I don't, to be honest. Okay, I fluked that. But honestly, that is a fluke because off camera, I always miss a bit. Always. And then you just go back. And you can either use this or your fingers and you just push it over and stitch it on. And it's fine. Don't ever think that it's a problem that if it happens to you. Happens to me a lot. All right. The trickiest part probably is you're going to have hand strength for this. We're going to turn the bag out without shoving it so hard that you smack, break something. It is quite tight. It's got lots of layers. Ugh. Ugh. Right, that'll do. Close enough. I'm going to grab my turning stick now and run along the seams and push them out. Should sit beautifully because of that piping. And the stuff, just run it along the inside. It won't damage it, I promise. My bag is not getting damaged because I've got a wooden one. This is a flute cleaner. For anyone that's new here and doesn't know what this is, this is a flute cleaner. Um, I use it as a turning stick. I sell them. They're pretty cheap. You can also get one from your local music shop, but don't get a metal one. I did try it. I promise. I was like, oh, let's get a metal one. It'll be stronger. And what I found is it damages more. So wood, if you're going to get one. All right. Zip it up. And look how pretty that sits. Still need, see there? See that? You can either Tory squish it, which is where you grab it and violently shake it. Or if that's not your thing, you can just go around and use pliers. This is also a good test to see if your bag will stand up against a person, right? I'm just, I'm not, I don't think I'm overly, overly rough, but I am fairly rough with it because I want to make sure it's going to work. How amazing is that? I freaking love it. So the, the foam in here was definitely a good idea. And the piping just helps to keep the bag super round. So there you go, guys. We are all done. One fabulous binded circle bag. Till next time, guys. Bye-bye.